Hello everybody, it's Sue from Slow So Sue. How are you? I'm sorry it's taken me so long to do my May makes and to be honest there weren't that many makes. Um, I don't really know why. Got busy, had work, actually I do know why. I'll tell you why. The reason why there weren't so many makes was because I did actually get busy in May. A couple of things happened. One, um, loads of work at work happened because I was sort of trapped at work. I carpooled for three weeks with Wayne because he had a course nearby where I work. So we left slightly later in the mornings and I usually do most of my work early in the morning at work. And then I had to stay at work until he was finished which was quite later and we didn't get home until late at night for us and um, because we get up so early it was just very long days for three weeks so um, that coupled with weekend of housework and things like that just didn't really get a lot done. I did make the A-line dress twice. The first time I made it and I'll insert some photos of me wearing it here. Um, the first time I made it, it I, I liked how it fitted, I, li I really loved the silhouette but because of my body shape um, and very round shoulders, scoliosis, um, that the neck, back of the neck was very gapy and also, and, and even in this Agnes, which I love, I have the same issue, it gapes in the, the neck. And thanks to uh, Vivian from I Guess So, thank you Vivian, um, who sent me through Instagram some um, help on how to fix the problem. I adjusted the um, A-line dress pattern by bringing the shoulder forward, so the shoulder seam. I bought the shoulder seam forward. The way you do that is um, put the the dress or your toile that you've made on, and the seam, and this one isn't. The seam should be in line with your earlobe, so you should be able to run your finger just straight down, and the seam should be in line with the earlobe. And if it's not, it needs to be moved forward or back to be in line with it. And so you measure how far on each side of the pattern so on the neck side neckline side and on the sleeve side and you measure it down and adjust it so that it's straight across the neck at uh, the shoulder and then you reduce the front piece by the same amount and what that does is it causes the back bodice pieces to actually wrap around your body shape correctly so it sits on your body properly the other thing I did was a sway back adjustment because I didn't really realise I needed one, but I do. And so with a sway back adjustment, excuse me, um, with a sway back adjustment and the forward shoulder adjustment that fixed the, the back fitting up and it fits just beautifully. Then in the front for the gaping neck, I um, there's another pattern adjustment you can do where you take a piece like a wedge out so you, you wear wherever you're gaping the most you fold it over pinch it over and see how much you need to take out and then you cut across your pattern piece you fold your pattern over so that the, there's a pivoting point in the arm side and you fold it down <coughs> in the front and then just draw it back up so I did that in the front I did my sway back, forward shoulder adjustment, made the second A-line dress with the French rose fabric and I'll put a picture in here and it fits so beautifully. The one thing that I did which I will change is when I made the toile just with some of that one dollar a meter cotton poplin the, and I have the issue here as well, um, the underarm just sort of stuck out a bit so I took a little piece out from here 
and it was only about a centimetre and then took that off the sleeve so that it all fits and that was beautiful but it reduced movement across the back of the shoulders so I'll put that back in because your arms are down most of the time and nobody ever sees that so I will do that, I'll put that back in um, <clears throat> but for a woven one but I'm actually right in the middle of making my third A-line dress I know crazy, I've just gone mad for this dress I love it the third one that I'm making is a short version and that is only because I only have enough fabric to make the short version because I'm making it in a maroon stretch velvet and I have um, omitted the zip in the back, the uh, centre seam lines in the bodice and the skirt in the front and the back. I still have the pockets in and I have omitted the um, facing running all the way down the centre because you don't need it so I've just cut it off and it's just a smaller facing but I still have the facing and I've made the facing in velvet and it doesn't make it too bulky in the neck or I don't think it does I'll show you that in June because I didn't actually start that until June so you know that's something that's coming out soon you'll see that in my June makes and <clears throat> in fact I've nearly finished it I just have to hand sew the hem on the sleeves and the skirt and it's done and I love it, I love the way it fits, it's just, it's really nice, I really love it. It could be an evening dress or I'm just going to wear it to work, so you know. And you put your hands in the pockets and you feel like you've got your cosy dressing gown on and it's really lovely, but it looks like a real classy dress, so I am like winning, or at least I think I am. So that's the Avid Seamstress dresses that I have made, I love them, I hope that you all try it as well. The um, <clears throat> in the instructions a couple of things one um, I may have missed this in the instructions but I'm pretty sure it didn't say to do this but I did it the facing that goes around the uh, neckline I actually caught the facing in the um, shoulder seam so that it doesn't you know move around and pop out I also um, understitched the whole thing which is really easy pretty sure it does say to do that but I kind of just you know had a bit of a squeeze at the pictures as I was going through and just went with it it's they do instruct you to put it together in a slightly unusual way for a dress you put the um, you put together the front bodice and the back bodice so you do the darts you put the your shoulder seams you uh, attach the you sew the front the back skirt center seams and then you attach the back to the or actually you attach the back skirts without the center seam sewn to the back bodice with the front bodice attached to the back bodice and then you insert the zip and then you do the facing and then you put the sleeves on and then you put the front skirt on and then you stitch the whole thing up down the side around the pocket and down and it seems a little bit you look and you go really what that's that's unusual and I just went with it went all right I'm just going to do it that way because the whole thing's a little bit unusual with the center seams and so forth so I just went with it and it's so easy it's really easy it's really quick and biggest piece of advice I can give is if you're going to make it take the time to make a twile and adjust the pattern it's a beautiful pattern and once you adjust it to fit your body shape I think it's a pattern that suits every body shape but you just need to tweak it so you've got the seams all in the right spots because we're all a bit different and once you've done that it's beautiful so easy to make you know just depending on what you make it out of really makes a dress and it can look so casual or it can look so classy and you could take the sleeves out and do sleeveless be a really simple thing to just put some facing in the sleeves as well I cannot rave enough about the A-line dress I'll put a little thing in here so you can see it and I'll put a link below so that if you do want to get the pattern you can go to their uh, website and get it from the Avid Seamstress I love it so two of those and I made two pairs of pants that's it 
there are wide leg pants don't have the pattern here with me I'll just get it one minute you've all seen it before here it is it's the Buttrix B6178 it's this version these are clots I just lengthened them down the same width but down to ankle length and I made them out of a sort of a, a light to medium weight chambray style denim which I'll put in a picture here now I really love these only I think that the leg might be just a bit too wide so if you have a look and tell me what you think and I did the same in just a a pant weight crepe uh, black I'll put that in here as well I oh, just I don't know I think the legs are too wide and the whole thing makes me look quite wide. The denim ones not so much as the black ones. The black ones, I'll put them back in again so you can see. I think it's probably because the black ones have the pockets in them. I didn't put pockets in the denim ones because with the denim ones I actually put little pockets in the front which you would have seen in jeans, just little patch pockets but they were too small and they looked silly so I took them off and left them plain and I actually really really like the denim ones plain but I think I need to take the leg in um, and I'm not really sure in taking the leg in do I take you know a small amount off either side of the leg to bring it in or do I just bring it in on the outer seam or the inner seam I don't know something I'm going to have to research I guess because um, I don't usually take things in not like that um, anyway tell me what you think I think they're a bit wide but that's it that is all I made that's all she wrote so um, I'm about nearly halfway through my crochet cardi and I haven't done any work on that, almost no work in May because, um, like I said, I just I haven't had time. I've been so tired, so much work. Anyway, stop whinging. That's all I've made. Um, I will be back really soon with um, my June plans. Although, we're, what are we? A week and a half into June already, so let's call them my June July plans. Um, so I will see you all again soon. Thanks for watching. Please give me a thumbs up or subscribe if you'd like to see more. Uh, let me know what you think about my wide leg pants. Should I take them in a little bit? Um, <clears throat> and I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Bye.